Hey everyone, this is Kyle Hamrick from School of Motion, and welcome to another video in the Learn from the Pro series on Adobe After Effects. In this video, we'll be talking about masks. Masks are a fundamental After Effects feature that allow you to cut out and combine different layers and elements and are the basis of a lot of visual effects and compositing work here in the program. Let's take a look at how to create and work with masks within After Effects. Using masks may be familiar if you're already a user of Adobe's other design and video apps. They're created by drawing paths on a layer using either the shape tool or the pen tool. When you do this, you're affecting what's known as the layer's alpha channel, which is kind of an extra, often invisible channel that allows you to determine the visibility of different portions of a layer. This is the basis of what's called compositing, when you combine different elements together to create a new cohesive image or video. To create a mask, first select the layer you want to apply it to. Let's come up here to the toolbar and select the shape tool. I'll just go with a rectangle. Click and drag here in the composition viewer, and now we have a mask on our layer. As you can see, the portions of the image inside the mask are visible, while the portions outside the mask can no longer be seen. I wanted to point out that using these drawing tools without a layer selected will actually create a shape layer, which Ian introduced you to in an earlier lesson. If you look carefully at the cursor, you'll see that it has an indicator to let you know which one you'll be creating. To draw a more organic shape, we can use the pen tool. Again, let's make sure our layer is selected, and then you can either click to create hard corners on the path, or click and drag to create these bezier handles for a curved path. There are some variant pen tools up here for adding, subtracting, and modifying these path points. Now we know how to create masks, but let's take a look at how they actually work. You can see I already have a mask on this layer, so I'll press the M key to reveal it on the timeline. The first property you'll see on the mask is the mode. This determines what the mask actually does. Add means you're seeing only what's within the mask. Subtract means you're seeing everything on the layer that's not within the mask. None is a useful mode for when you're working with a mask, but still need to be able to see the rest of the layer. To learn about these other modes, we'll need a second mask on our layer. I'll come back up to my shape tool, choose an ellipse, and draw another mask on the layer. Notice that After Effects adds a new mask right here in the timeline as Mask 2. Since these are both set to add, I can see what's inside both of them. If I set the mode for Mask 2 to Subtract, now it's actually cutting away from my other mask. If I set the mode to Intersect, now it only shows the area where these two overlap. Much like layers and effects, the stacking order matters. I'd encourage you to just import some assets, draw a couple of masks, and explore this functionality to get more comfortable with it. If you are adding multiple masks to a layer, you're definitely going to want to keep them straight, right? You can rename any mask by clicking on the name and pressing Enter and you can manually choose the color of each mask by clicking on this little color chip. I'll delete the second mask and twirl open the original one, so we can look at some of these other properties. The first is the path itself, which you can edit and even animate. One very important thing about masks is that they always move and transform with the layer they're on, as you can see here. To move the entire mask at once, you can click on either the mask's name or the mask path property here in the timeline. Notice how all the points change from round when they're unselected to little squares when they are selected. We'll just move this around a little bit. To free transform the entire mask, you can double click directly on the path here. Oops, I missed the path and that actually opened this up in the layer viewer, which can be useful sometimes, but right now that's not what I want. Let's go back to our composition viewer and being very careful here, I'll double click right on the path itself. Notice this bounding box. Now we'll be able to move it around as well as scale or rotate this mask. To close that out, we'll double click either directly on the path or anywhere outside of it. Often you'll want individual control over one or more of these points, which After Effects calls vertexes. If I single click anywhere just to deselect these, notice that they've gone back to the round dots now I can individually select and manipulate a single point. To select multiple points at once, you can either hold Shift and click More. You can grab any straight path segment to move both of those points at once. Or you can actually drag a box around all the points you'd like to control and move them all at once. 
Since After Effects is an animation program, we can, of course, be making our mask change over time, which I can do by activating the stopwatch here on the Mask Path property to start creating keyframes. So maybe I'll start with this shape here, go forward a little bit, and change a few points. I know maybe this isn't the most exciting thing ever, but it's the basis of all the other masking work you'll do in the future, so it's good to get a handle on how all of this works. Below that, we have Mask Feather, which adjusts how hard or soft the mask edges are. This is measured in pixels and is centered on the path, so if I were to set this to 100, it's feathering 50 pixels inside the mask and 50 pixels outside. If you need to get really specific here, there's a special Mask Feathering tool that allows you to finesse this as much as you like. Mask Opacity adjusts how opaque or transparent this individual mask is. This becomes a lot more relevant when you have multiple masks like we did earlier. Mask Expansion lets you either shrink or grow a mask. This is also measured in pixels without actually having to change the path itself. Animating this property can be an easy way to create an iris reveal, for example. Those are the basics of creating and using masks in Adobe After Effects. Understanding how they work is an essential skill, and this is really just the beginning. Masks can do so much more than we have time to show in this video. Be sure to check out all the other videos in the Learn from the Pros series on Adobe After Effects. For Adobe Creative Cloud, I'm Kyle Hamrick from School of Motion. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.